Now, we're discussing power generation in Nigeria. National grid collapses seven times in 2024. Now, our national grid electricity, um, our national electricity grid, rather, in Nigeria has collapsed for the second time in 24 hours, plunging many areas into darkness once again. The first collapse occurred around 6.48 p.m. on October 14, 2024, and a second collapse followed on October 15 at 9.17 a.m. Electricity distribution companies Disco's like Eco, Kaduna and Enugu announced outages across their networks affecting major regions including Lagos and parts of northern and southeastern Nigeria. The transition com transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, is reportedly working to restore the grid while some areas like parts of Abuja are undergoing maintenance for improved service. The frequent collapses have disrupted power supply causing significant inconvenience to residents and businesses across the country. Now, our guest today is Dr. Idowu Oyebanjo. He's the MD, Aidfon Power Engineering Consultants Limited. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. And uh, regards to our viewers and listeners worldwide. Thank you so much. Okay, so can you give us an overview of, you know, our power sector? And while we're seeing these collapses, we're talking seven in 2024 alone and in fact if two can happen in less than 24 hours that's quite alarming can you give us an overview on our power sector thank you very much uh Roman. Yeah. um the power sector as you know was privatized uh, you know in 2013 mm -hmm. and uh, since privatization was uh, uh thought to be an avenue to improve the power sector uh, it failed. It failed because of lack of meritocracy. It failed because it was designed to fail. Yeah. You see, there is no place where you have a functional power system where you hand over the power system to people who are not both technically and commercially qualified. And so, uh, I mean, financially qualified. So we entered a situation that was going to be a long run uh, to a disaster in 2013. Now, how do you correct it? Over time, you require investments. But investments have not been done properly. Investments were done in the power sector since that time, and even before then, without what we call power system studies. Yeah. If you don't do power system studies, you cannot just simply go and place a transformer or substation in Lagos or in Kaduna or elsewhere in Nigeria because you have to know where the demand is mm. but people have placed investment in various places various parts of Nigeria and this investment themselves cause grid collapse because what will happen in a, a, a network that is weak such as Nigeria and is lightly loaded and you now put a transformer a lump of impedance sorry for my technical jargons mm -hmm. you put it in a place where there is nothing Let's say there, there are no many people in that place. You go and put a big transformer there. What will happen is we call it Ferranti effect. It will cause voltage rise, and that voltage rise will go and knock off the grid and cause this grid collapse. So by trying to be clever by half, putting some substations in places where there are no people, where there are no, no lives or no activities, or in various places without system studies, uh, they have caused themselves some form of problems. That's one. Another thing is this. In the process of doing this investment, there, there became misalignment. Just think about a country with 13,500 uh, megawatts of installed capacity. So think about my numbers. They have 13,500 megawatts available, is uh, there, installed, okay? Not really available, installed. However, the wires that are able to carry the thing can only carry just maybe 5,500. So where will the 13,500 go? Mm. And to make it worse, the distribution companies that can take this power, at least the 5,500, to Nigerians, they have issues in their network, on their network, issues bordering around commercial activities, energy theft, and so, and, and so they don't take the power. So they take around 3,500 on the average. So what does this mean? This misalignment of having installed capacity of 13,500 that can only pass through transmission system of 5,500 and can always, can only, uh, can, part of it can only be taken by the distribution companies, cause a, uh, a very big problem for the Nigerian power network. 
So this problem arose because of wrong investment and uh, people carry, not carrying out uh, um, power system uh, studies. Now, when President Bola Ahmed Tinubu came in, in June last year, he signed the Electricity Act. That's how to get Nigeria out of this conundrum. That's how to resolve the power sector problem as we face it, at least the technical side. And of mm -hmm. course, the commercial side too. Because when you decentralize the network, you make use of renewables and sub sustainable electricity systems. You also limit the, 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 the extent of the problem. So grid collapse will then reduce. Mm -hmm. Over the course of this discussion, I will tell our viewers and yourself, how to finally remove the concept of grid collapse from Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so I know that you're referred to as Mr. Power Systems because, of course, you that's what you studied. Um, but I want to understand what something you've said now is obviously it's not properly maintained. But is it also outdated? Are we talking about, you know, maybe it's underfunded? Um, what are some reasons, why, aside the fact that it's not properly maintained, what are other factors that have contributed to this? Because we are supposed to be the giant of Africa, right? And we are a nation with over 200 million people, but if we're still um, being able to only transmit or um, generate about 5,500 megawatts, um, uh, is, is, is that not a crisis? Because our counterparts, a country like South Africa, that has just about 20 million people can generate over 70,000 megawatts. So what other, what, what other factors have contributed to this grid collapse um, that we're seeing right now? Thank you very much for, for that question. So the other factors include things like lack of investment, principally. Mm. You see, the power sector in Nigeria has predominantly gas system because Nigeria is a gas-rich country. Mm. So most of our power plants are gas-based. At least about 80% of our generation portfolio come from gas. So you would expect that over the years, in the last 60 years, investments in gas to power will have been done such that we will have power generation of at least up to 40,000 uh, megawatt by now. Mm -hmm. But that's not what happened. There has not been investment in gas power systems, gas to power systems. So that's number one, lack of investment in the gas end. The second one is lack of investment in the transmission end. And when I say lack of investment, it's not that they have not been committing funds to transmission. But the question you will ask, these funds and the utilization the implementation of these projects, how were they done? Did you follow up? Did you do a review of the performance of the investment? Did you check whether these investments were actually carried out? So these are some of the problems uh, that have been deviled the, the power sector. So the investments, were they in the right places that will make grid collapse not happen? The investments, were, were they adequate? Now, were they monitored for implementation? Now, that's one of the problems investments the other one is there is no no uh, monitoring uh, supervisory control and data acquisition system so yeah. this SCADA system since 1990 we've been hearing SCADA system SCADA system in nigeria it has not it has never materialized up to today mm -hmm. there is one that they have talked about recently sponsored by the world bank and hopefully they they said that one will come on on, on stream in 2025 mm. but it's sad that over 20, 30 years, we've been hearing about SCADA in Nigeria. SCADA means Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System, which means they will be able to see whenever the fault is developing, they will see the flows. If it is happening in Calabar, they will quickly see it because they are seeing it on their computer. Then they will do something. For example, we can open the circuit breaker so that it doesn't affect the rest of the system. So that's one. Another thing that affects this grid collapse, shamefully, is the lack of protection coordination. Lack of protection coordination is, is, is a big problem in Nigeria. The system is not coordinated. So it will never be stable. It will always go into grid collapse, except we decentralize and then put protection coordination as an important tool. Mm. There are other things that can cause grid collapse. Essentially, load rejection can cause grid collapse. So all of these factors put together, uh, they, 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 they cause us problems. But one thing I have to mention quickly is that Whenever there is grid collapse, there is paucity of information. It's so scarce. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. Every grid collapse has to be investigated 
and the reason for the Greek collab has to be published. It's not a matter of saying that uh, we are going to carry out the investigation later, and then everybody will have forgotten. Because if you look at the history of grid collapse in Nigeria, it will shock you to realize that the same equipment that failed 30 times are still the ones failing. The same lines that have been tripping since, since 20 years, they are still the same ones that are tripping now, causing grid collapse. So it's because there is lack of investigation. Look, where I was trained in the UK, heads we roll. Mm -hmm. I'm not recommending that heads we roll in Nigeria because we are still a weak uh, power system. Mm -hmm. But at least sanctions. You don't just have grid collapse. Grid collapse is a political shame for people in the UK, in the US. Yeah. The president will not be happy if you have a grid collapse because internationally it will smack a, a, a adversity. So. We have to take this issue of grid collapse seriously. Fortunately for us, there are now solutions mm. to it. All right. So I, I know you just even said, of course, it has to be published. We need to know. It has to be investigated. But here we have the power minister that has denied the multiple collapses. In fact, he blamed it on minor trip, to, trip offs. That was what he said. And it's like, of course, it was just one time. It's just a minor trip off. It's not a grid collapse, even though we kind of know better. But my question now is, um, what are some long-term and short-term solutions that we need to be looking at to avert all of this? Because it's embarrassing that a whole nation like this, a nation that supplies electricity to even other countries, we're having grid collapse and we're thrown into darkness. What are some uh, things or some things, yeah, some policies or um, measures and solutions that you think we need to start to implement right now? Okay, the very first one is to respect the Electricity Act. Mm. That Electricity Act needs to be implemented. That Electricity Act calls for a policy document that describes the Nigeria uh, Electricity Policy and Strategic Implementation Plan. That needs to come out. Secondly, it asks for a Nigerian uh, Independent System Operator, NESO. This all of these problems will rest on this newly yet to be formed company. It's supposed to be formed around end of August by law. So this company, NISO, the independent system operator, is going to be the one in charge. It has to be empowered to do its job properly. Part of his job is the system planning and system studies I talked about. Part of his job is to avoid grid collapse and sanction market participants that are not behaving themselves and sanction the discos that will not do their investment and sanction any other market participant that will not carry out investment based on the tariff that people are paying to them. That's one. That's the first thing they should do. Mm -hmm. The second thing that should be done is for all the states to endeavor where they can implement the electricity act. It's not good that only six out of all of the states have been able to raise the electricity market, which is supposed to be a juicy opportunity for a state to get industrialized. If a state wants to get industrialized, if a, if a state ever wants economic development, there are a few things they need to do, and electricity infrastructure will be one of them. So all those states, Abia, Anambra, you know, Enugu, or your, I mean, Ekiti uh, Ondro, you know, those ones that have taken the blue by the arm to, to have the electricity market, kudos to them. Others should follow. Or, okay. So, apart from Electricity Act, there are now technologies that can be used to prevent grid collapse. Mm. These technologies are new because they have just come up by virtue of what, what, uh, what the Western world needs now. Because mm. they are putting solar panels everywhere in the mm. western world mm. they are putting renewables we call them wind solar mm. for them to be able to assist with their power generation uh, because they don't have fuel uh, fossil fuel like us so in such a case the system will run into problems so they are using some technologies now but for people who understand power systems you will now use those technologies you will use them to service our own. If you can understand me, yes, people sir. don't want their grid co to collapse. They have power, but because of wind and solar can go at any time. Let's say in the night, there is no sun. So the power will go down. To avoid it, they put some technologies. But we, we are in permanent darkness. 
here in Nigeria. Therefore, if we tweak it, which I have done, if we tweak it because of the understanding of the design principles and power system functions, I have tweaked it to make a presentation to the people in authority in Nigeria to say, look, I can use these principles to now stop grid collapse and do system studies for you and put it in the right places. I've not had results from them, but this is where we will go. Especially when we have states that are interested in keeping their electricity on, we are going to implement these solutions for them. And hopefully, uh, uh, we start to see 24 7 electricity in Nigeria. Fantastic. I love the fact that, you know, you even spoke about technologies and that was going to be my next question because I'm like, have we fully integrated um, wind and solar into our system? Because if we're talking about Nigeria being a progressive nation, look at other parts of the world. That's what they're doing. So how do you think the government needs to respond to this? Because grid collapse, like I said, is embarrassing. What should be the response right now? And moving forward, what should we do? Yeah, thank you. It's, it's embarrassing and it's also causing uh, all the uh, investors in Nigeria to spend more on production and therefore things will be expensive. So mm -hmm. industrial sector does not have electricity. They suffer a lot. And so this 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 is is real crisis. Now, when you talk about sustainable electricity systems like renewables, uh, wind, solar that uh, they have been done, mm -hmm. let me just shock you with something. Because of the need for electricity in a country like UK, they took a pipe, let's say, let's call it pipe, it's connection anyway, underground cable, submarine cable. Mm -hmm. They connected it from Sahara Desert, where there is plenty of sunshine 24 7. Wow. They connected it right under the water, through the sea, to their country, yeah. UK. Okay. You know why they did that? I explained to you before that in the night, there will be no light. Yes. In those Western countries, even their sun is not real sun. So they need a place where there is permanent sunlight. Guess where they came to? Africa. So they came to Africa to connect cable under the sea all the way. Now, we are sitting on, we are, we are in a country where we have sunshine reasonably, mm -hmm. at least the northern part of Nigeria. This is where we should have had a lot of solar systems powering and helping the country. That's why I said it is important to understand the Electricity Act, because the Electricity Act stipulated that Within six months or thereabout, or, or, or some number of months, there is going to be a Nigerian electricity policy and strategic implementation plan. Inside that policy, it is my expectation that it will be clearly described how Nigeria will transition or include in its portfolio of energy resources the renewables. Mm -hmm. And slowly, we shall continue to now use renewables to help every state especially those ones that have decided to take the bull by the own, I mean, forming the Electricity Commission, hmm. we are going to help them use renewables to stabilize their network. All right. This is where we have to wrap it up here because we're a little bit out of time. But I want to say thank you for coming. I, I mean, we've understood how the power sector works and what we need to be doing because we can't be here parading ourselves as a giant of Africa whereby we're thrown into darkness and we're not even harnessing the potentials that we have because, like you rightly said, we have sun. We have everything to our advantage, but we're not maintaining, we're not funding, we're not doing what we need to do to ensure that our power sector and the Electricity Act, you know, is properly implemented. I hope that, you know, the government is listening, everyone is listening, even the states, because you said we have just about six states um, in Nigeria that are, you know, trying to generate power following the Electricity Act. We hope that other states will start to generate that because with power, of course, it helps your economy, it helps generate revenue for you uh, for your for your nation and that's what we want in nigeria a nation that is thriving progressive and transformative but dr Udo, we want to say thank you for coming it's a pleasure having you on our program today thank you so much thank you all right have a good day Fantastic. We've been speaking with Dr. Idowu Oyebanjo. He's the MD8 from Power Engineering Consultants Limited. And we've just been talking about the grid collapse that happened um, twice in 24 hours and seven times in 2024.